Hello and welcome. In this video I'm going to be showing you how I convert this Tonka dump truck to remote control. I'm a really big fan of these Tonka toys. I have very many fond memories of playing with them myself in the sand pit as a child. I uh, got this one for just £5. I uh, found it on Facebook. My son's really keen on a remote control dump truck so there you go, I decided it'd be a fun project for us to do to convert this one to remote control. It's probably going to be in two parts, the first will be getting it moving and then the second part will be the tipping mechanism because I want it to uh, tip via the remote control as well. So in the truck are all the parts I'm going to be using apart from the remote control unit which I'll come to in a moment. This isn't the first time a video has been done on this conversion. All the videos I found were using Axial and Traxxas parts and certainly in this country they are really really expensive. So these are all parts that I've bought from AliExpress. I'll put links in the description to all the bits that I've used. And I'm going to take them out in a moment and go through them in more detail. Okay, first out of the truck is the wheels and tyres, or are the wheels and tyres. These are beadlock wheels as you can see so they come in three parts I've left one of them still with just the tire and wheel separately and then one of them you'll notice lined up next to the original Tonka wheel they're just slightly bigger um, but with the axles that I'm going to be using I think they're going to be, the axles are going to be further down so I think it's going to accommodate those those wheels just fine next up we have the axles these are both the same they're both steering as you can probably tell so one of the other videos I saw on uh, converting one of these Tonkas it was four wheel steer and I really like the idea of that I think it's going to make it a lot more maneuverable especially because there isn't much clearance for the wheels to turn so a little bit of turn from both the front and back wheels will be much easier to achieve than a, a, a really good steering angle on, on just a front axle so these are both identical there's no differential in them uh, this one's got the servo mounted up as you can obviously tell. In terms of mounting them to the body of the truck uh, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet but I've got a few ideas on how it might work. Making use of some of the screw holes and stuff that are already available. I'll show you that later on in the video. These are also going to be part of it so these rose joints connected to some threaded rod to stabilise the axles when they're in position. There's the other servo. These servos, they look pretty good. They come with a variety of arms and stuff like that. Okay, next we have the gearbox and the motor. This is an ATT 540 brushed motor. Doesn't need a particularly fancy sort of race motor for, uh, for this application. This comes with a, a cog which isn't on here at the moment, but then that mounts in there. A little bit of an issue regarding waterproofing. I got this motor really to just to test it out and see how it gets on and then I'll, I'll either waterproof this one uh, if it works really well or if not I might use a different one that's that's fully enclosed. So that bolts in, bolts in there I've already taken it, this apart and greased it up there was a little bit of grease in but not really as much as, as you'd want and then I've got these sliding drive shafts which I'm hoping I'm going to be able to cut down to shorten particularly for the for the front I think they're a, a D sort of uh, section and then little grub screws on the end to mount them onto there and last but by no means least the radio gear and some of the electronics so this is a Flysky FSGT5 six channel remote I got a six channel so that there's extra channels available for controlling the tipping of the uh, of the dump bed at the back, um, this one does has got quad steer functionality built in, um, so you don't need any separate uh, sort of circuitry for for doing that. There's the receiver, six channel as you can see, 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Hobby Wing Quick Run 1060 bushed, uh, brushed, excuse me, speed controller, which seems to be reasonably well made. And that brings us to the end of going through all the parts. So now it's time to start putting it together. 
I'm going to show this in stages and it's not going to be an absolute step by step build because I'm doing this with my son and I want us to just be able to work on that together without having to worry about videoing but when we've done each stage I'll put the camera on and show you what we've done. Right the conversion has started as you can hopefully tell with the new wheels so removed the old wheels and the axles that was the case of removing the metal cap holding the axle in place just at one end and then pulling them out. Uh, my son liked the wheels so much he wanted to use them on a trailer for the dump truck so here we have a tractor trailer uh, just knocked together from bits I had bits of aluminium and uh, plastic sheeting that I had in the garage here are the original wheels on their original axles so these caps just remove and that's how you uh, you can take them off with a towing hook this is going to be towed by the dump truck when it's finished back to the main event so fitted the new axles as you can tell I'll just turn it round so you can see the wheels stick out slightly more from the body than they did with the original. That's kind of intentional because we need some space for it to be able to steer so that's about the maximum lock. But you'll remember it's going to be four wheel steer so it's actually going to be able to turn like that. It straightened itself out which is not so bad at all. I'll turn it upside down now so you can see how I've done it. So hopefully you've got a better view now of how I've done this. So the main weight of the axle, or sorry, the vehicle when it's the right way up, is resting on the axle. So the, the, the original plastic chassis is touching the axle and that's taking the weight of it. Then I've used this four millimeter threaded rod just here. Through the original holes below the servo mount on these axles, these were originally three millimeter, but three millimeter rod was bending too much. So I've uh, expanded those out to four millimeters these nuts here you see here here and here these are two nuts locked together so that these rods can be held with a spanner while the other nuts are put in place i've got nylock nuts on the ends here so you need to be able to hold the rod while you're doing those up with a spanner so that rod stops this axle going forwards and backwards and you can see the nuts up there also stop it going side to side and then to stop it tilting and so that we can get the steering angle exactly at right angles to the to the level plane of the of the chassis I've got these two sort of stabilizer bars here so these ends are bought from aliexpress along with the rest of the stuff and i'll put links to the, these in the description they're all three millimeter bolts holding them in place so these mountings were there on the axle as as purchased i've had to drill two small holes in the chassis, see them there, and then you can uh, lengthen or shorten these rods to get the plane of the steering just right. So, obviously, repeated that on the back. There you go. I don't know how well you can tell, I have had to trim the chassis in a few places to get the necessary steering lock, so I've cut a corner out here for the servo arm and then just shaved the edge off this so that the steering arm there can, can go over it. So I think it's got a pretty good, pretty good steering lock. Time will tell once we've connected it all up. So the next job is to fit the transfer box, central gearbox, whatever you want to call it. There aren't actually many gears in, it's not got a differential or anything. Um, I've put the motor on it now as you can see. I think what I'm probably going to do is have it, move my hand out of the way so you can see, have it like that, albeit much further in. So at the moment this cross piece here is stopping the motor going in so I think I'm going to have to trim that away that will allow the motor to drop in as far as possible and then we'll have a, a bracket from here because there's threaded parts on there going straight up and screwing into this area here. 
I may regret putting these axles in before sorting out the electrics because I want the speed controller to go in there and then the battery is probably going to go in the, in the front. So that's the reason for having the motor that way so that the cable runs are nice and short to the speed controller and the motor. So I'll crack on with that and be back with you with another update when it's in. Okay, so in the last part I said I was going to come back to you when the motor was in. You will no doubt be able to spot that I've actually made quite a lot more progress than that. In fact, it is finished. Sorry I didn't get to video it step by step, but it's one of those things where I just got a little bit carried away. So, there's the motor. Here's the gearbox or the reduction gear. You see there's a little bit of play in it, but it's mounted on this aluminium bracket using those four bolt holes that were already in it and angled down at the bottom and screwed in to the body shell, or the, the, the plastic chassis, I should say, with, uh, with two bolts just down there. After that, I did the, uh, the drive shafts. I just did those loosely so I could then do the electrics, but I'll tell you about them now. So these are uh, drive shafts that have been shortened they're, they're keyed so it's a D section uh, where one slots into the other to maintain the drive but that D section is only on the first bit of the drive shaft so when you cut them down like I've had to here they basically spin inside each other and that's why they've got these pins. That turns out to be quite useful actually because when this is all in place this means that the drive shafts can telescope in to enable them to be fitted and then you can move them out to the right length and put the pin in to hold them in place. So let's talk about the electrics. The battery obviously is up at the front here. I've got these two, these are actually old bits of bicycle inner tube. And they are uh, bolted through, or they, they go through a, a plastic loop, which is bolted to the frame. There's one there, one there. The cable, the battery cable is quite close to this wheel, especially when it's on full lock. But if it's held in place, it, it, it keeps itself out of the way quite nicely. So I had to extend the battery cable. You see it loops under there, past the servo, onto the speed controller, and then back out to the motor. I've got the receiver over this side with the aerial here. The one thing you'll notice that is kind of flapping in the breeze still a little bit is the power switch. We haven't quite decided where to put that yet. So for now, it just kind of hangs there, but that's not ideal um, in, the, in the long term. But, uh, but yeah, it's okay for now. So you'll no doubt tell from the dirt on the tyres that this has already had a little bit of a test and it's a lot of fun. I will show you that in a minute. I've deliberately pegged back the top speed of the motor to make it more, uh, to make it easier to drive. It's got loads of torque. Uh, the, the steering works really well. I'll show you. I'll just show you the drivetrain working and then the steering. I must say this FS GT5 is really nice in terms of the uh, the customization that you can that you can put into it to to make sure that the uh, you're getting maximum lock and and roughly equal not not exactly equal I know but roughly equal lock on the on the front and back uh, axles so yeah really uh, really cool I've got this set to uh, reverse and forward with no no braking or anything like that so just straightforward uh, forward and back. Let's put it the right way up now and see how it runs.
Okay, so that's it for part one of this Tonka dump truck remote control conversion. I hope you found it interesting. I hope maybe it's inspired you to uh, go out and do your own remote control conversion. It's not completely finished. The next stage is to get some linear actuators and make it tip. There's uh, enough spare channels in this remote system that we should be able to do that quite easily. But I said at the start of this, I was gonna make a, a two-parter because we wanna play with this now, basically. And then the next part will be about the linear actuators for the tipping mechanism. So, as I say, I hope you found this interesting. I hope you found it inspiring in terms of going out and doing your own conversion. Thanks very much for watching. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already and give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. See you next time. Bye.